Hey everyone, Chef Sarah here with the Sylvia Center. We're a nonprofit specializing in providing food and nutrition education in New York City and Columbia County. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please do. That way you can get more videos like this one. Okay, so it's time to get started on our mushroom stroganoff. First, I want to talk about the ingredients I have here. Um, so today we're making mushroom stroganoff. You might have heard of beef stroganoff before. This is a version of that where we're trying to make it a little healthier and to reduce meat. So if you are looking to reduce meat in your diet, this is a really, really great recipe. Or if you just want to start cooking vegetarian, this is also a really great way to substitute mushrooms for beef. So today I'm using cremini mushrooms. You could use shiitake mushrooms or button mushrooms. Really whatever you can get your hands on would work great. Um, I want to pack a lot of flavor into this dish. So the three ingredients that are going to pack the most flavor are garlic, thyme, and shallots. So the shallot that I have here, it's basically like a really tiny onion that packs so much flavor. So I mince this really, really fine since it is really strong. And these three ingredients will make sure that we're not substituting any flavor in this dish. I also have Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add that at the very end just to help to keep this to be really super creamy. Um, I have olive oil, Greek yogurt, and a little bit of Dijon. I also have salt, pepper, some vegetable stock, and a little bit of flour. So here in a little bit, I'm gonna teach you all about a roux, and we're gonna use a roux to make this thick and creamy so we don't have to add a bunch of extra dairy like heavy cream or sour cream. So it's another way to make this dish just a little bit healthier as well. Okay, so it's time to get started cooking. Okay, so to start the mushroom stroganoff, I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in my pan. Once that gets hot, usually after about a minute or two, I'm gonna add in the mushrooms. So you could use any type of mushrooms you have. You could use cremini or shiitake or button mushrooms, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, at this point, I also added in the minced shallot. So I'm gonna give this a really good stir and just make sure everything's coated with that olive oil. Once that's coated, you can see this is about five to seven minutes later, and I added a little bit of salt and pepper. So I'm also just gonna give that another mix and just make sure everything is nice and combined. And then I'm gonna add in my garlic and thyme. So once I mix this together, I'm gonna to just let it cook for about two to three more minutes. And that's going to make sure all those flavors get nice and toasty in that pan. And you can see this is all just going to start to cook together and it starts to smell really, really good at this point. This is when, if it starts to look dry, this is when you want to add just a little bit extra oil. So we are making a roux and a roux is made when you have fat and you add flour. And what this is gonna do is gonna help us to make it really creamy once we add in the vegetable stock. So you would use a roux if you were making um, a cream soup or if you were making so many different things, macaroni and cheese or au gratin potatoes. This is just a way to make either a cream sauce or a cheese sauce really pretty perfect and amazing each time. So as you can see, I kind of moved on to the whisk and I'm scraping those little flour bits off the bottom. So we want that flour to cook for just a minute or two before I start adding stock. So you can see I added a little splash of the vegetable stock as I'm stirring all those little browned flour bits in there. And you can see as it bubbles, it's getting really thick. So as I mix that in, you can see each little piece of the mushrooms and the flour, it's starting to create that sauce that's gonna be that base and to keep it really, really thick. Um, every time it starts to come up to a boil, you'll see that it gets thicker each time. Um, I'm gonna keep adding stock in until it is the consistency that I want. And after each time, I'm gonna let it bubble up just a little bit just to make sure it's really getting incorporated and becoming the texture that we're looking for. So you can see after each time that I incorporate, I'm just giving that another mix. You can see how beautiful that looks. And I'm using vegetable stock 
but you could always use chicken stock or beef stock. It's really whatever you prefer. Um, I like to use homemade if you have it. Today I'm just using store-bought low-sodium vegetable broth or stock. Okay, so at this point, this is looking like the consistency I want. So I think one more good mix. Let that bubble up and we'll see how we're looking. Okay. A nice little simmer. You can see those tiny little bubbles. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to add in my Greek yogurt. And this is not flavored. And then I'm going to stir that and add a little bit of Dijon mustard as well. It's going to add a little bit of tanginess and also help with that texture. And you can see this is also just going to help to thicken it up. And this is also going to give flavor. Okay, and once again, at this point, I'll usually season it one more time. Um, I usually like to season a couple times throughout cooking just to make sure all those flavors are really incorporated. At the very end, I'll do a taste test and season it one last time. That's always an important step just to make sure that everything tastes perfect. Okay, so at this point, I'm just adding a little handful of Parmesan cheese. I saved a little bit for the top also. But it's just a nice way to garnish our mushroom stroganoff. Okay, so after one last stir, this is going to be when we add in our pasta or noodles. You could use any kind of pasta. You could use egg noodles for this if you want. Um, I really like this to be a little saucy, but that's just my personal preference. So feel free to add more pasta than I did if you'd like. It wouldn't be as saucy, but that is completely up to you. So at this point, I'm going to give it just a last little stir. I'm going to taste it and season it. And then we are good to go. Okay, so my mushroom stroganoff is complete. You can see it's beautiful and nice and creamy and steamy. It is perfect for a cool fall night like this one. Um, with this, you can add a lot of different veggies if you'd like. You could have broccoli or peas, onions, peppers, really anything would go so great in here. If you want it a little spicy, you could add a little hot sauce or a little red pepper flake. It's really up to you. You could also top this with some more herbs. You could put some parsley on there or grate some more of that cheese. Um, I'm really excited. I'm going to go eat this. Have a wonderful day. I hope you make this recipe. Bye, everyone.